it may never shock me again. It may shock me in 10 years. It may shock me tomorrow. I don't know. Just whenever it does. Well, first of all, like, talk to me about just your, your time serving. Two tours. Um, you said you knew you wanted to do it since you were five. Just walk me through just how you got into the military. Uh, I went to MEPS, and, or to, yeah, the recruiter, mm -hmm. and it was like in a delayed enlistment. Yeah. And they just sucked me in to MEPS one day, and that was my enlistment date. Like all of that delayed stuff was wiped away, and uh, it looked like I went from there to the train station and down to San Antonio <laughs> and went to boot camp. Uh, I served uh, seven years. My enlistment was for six, and I had one for a medical holdover. Um, they medically retired me uh, for deployment uh, injuries, combat-related injuries. And then uh, I got out and went to work at Lockheed. And why, why, why did you know that's what you wanted to do at five years old? Oh, man, that's all. I love I loved being around the jets and the, the airplanes. That's what I was. I was an aircraft mechanic. Uh, yeah, just being around all that and then the brotherhood of, you know, meeting new people and spending time with them. Yeah, that was a good time, meeting all those people. What would you do in Iraq? I was a uh, C-130 crew chief, and we taught the Iraqis how to fix their planes that we gave them. They were the initial two. We set up the squadron, mm -hmm. and then uh, we taught them from just everything on how to uh, maintain it and catch it whenever it comes back, initial takeoffs, all that, inspections. And then, uh, yeah, we did. Cool, <laughs> Worked side Should by I side with them. Like mm -hmm. um, and so what do you think the hardest part with doing that was? Uh, man, there wasn't really I guess dealing with everybody higher up. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like being that far away from your? Did you have kids then, or? Uh, no, it was just Priscilla and I met her in uh, high school, married her, whenever I transitioned from San Antonio to Wichita Falls. Mm -hmm. I met. Uh, we got married, and then she got all my orders. We went to Germany together, and then uh, Iraq. All that. Oh, she traveled with you. <laughs> uh huh. Oh wow. So it was, it wasn't that big of a transition for her, I guess. Yeah. I wasn't gone that long. It was only, well, I guess I was gone six months. Yeah. But uh. That's pretty cool. Uh huh. That's good. <laughs> um, now walk me through thirty plus war injuries. Uh, well, it was just the surgery. So uh, the first time I was out there, and uh, and I, a mortar went off. And it blew me into a tent. And then that knocked out both my knees. And I just went back to work with it. And they just got worse and worse and worse. So I had uh, knee surgeries in that. And then the second time I went, I was holding an outboard flap and we were getting attacked. And it, I held it a little too long and it crushed my back, I, like compressed it. And then uh, I did, didn't do nothing about it for a long time. <laughs> So uh, like a bunch of knee surgeries. I've been run over by the t an F-35 and crushed my foot. Um, <clears throat> whenever I was out there, I also broke my arches. So whenever I got back, they put in metal plates in my feet. And uh, this one got infected and they had to take it out. Luckily, because that one got ran over by an F-35 <laughs> over here at Lockheed Martin. And then, uh, yeah, not much longer after that, I was having back surgery and I put in a spinal cord stimulator. So this isn't my only battery. I got another one down here uh -huh. that controls my back, keeps it from hurting. I just felt like a lot of pressure in my neck and I couldn't slow down my heart rate. And I'm usually pretty good at that. Uh, I stopped, whenever I got out of the military, I was on like 23 different medications a day. Mm -hmm. And I, pretty, I winged off of all of those with my doctor's help and everything. And I learned some techniques on how to like slow your heart rate down, uh, breathing techniques, things like that. So I was trying to do that and it wasn't working. I was doing four by four breathing. Nothing was seeming to help. And Priscilla came home and uh, she saw like 
I was sweating profusely. She's like, you need to go to the ER. I was like, nah, I'm just going to lay down and go to bed. And uh, like five minutes later, not even, I don't even think it was that long. I was like, yeah, I don't want to go to the ER. And we just went to the ER after that. Um, and it's The pressure didn't start in my, like my arms or anything. It started in my throat. By the time I got to the ER, it was in my shoulders. And right before they shocked me, it was going down my arm. Did you know what it was when you were? Uh, when I got to the ER, they were like, you're having a heart attack. I was like, this is a wild feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think like, like when they said that and you, you felt your body kind of compulsing? Uh, they were just trying to tell me to stay calm and breathe. I was like, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've yeah. been trying to calm my heart rate. I was talking to them real calmly. I wasn't uh, scared by no means or any of that, worried. Mm -hmm. The nurses there were amazing. They were helping me out a whole bunch. And so, obviously, surgery ain't nothing to you at this point. <laughs> no. You had how many surgeries did you have? Uh, 37. And this is the 37th? Or? No, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, th you have had 36 surgeries prior to this. Um, was this surgery different for you? Mm, no, I was excited yeah. a little bit. Like I said, I already had the other battery in my back, so was, what's another battery? It's, they they uh, explained it to me. It didn't seem that, that bad. No. So for what I know, it's a Aurora defibrillator, and it sits on the outside underneath my arm, kind of like my armpit. Mm -hmm. And the, the wires go up underneath my chest, and they just lay against my heart. And, like, nothing goes inside my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it detects like it's going too fast or going too slow, it can uh, send a shock to my heart. And then the doctors can see everything. Like uh, they can, if I, whenever I go to sleep, I have this little station, and then it downloads everything for the night, and then it sends it to my doctor. So if it were to go off in the night and I don't know it, the doctors call me in the morning and tell me to go to the ER. <laughs> I think they even got better, like my my heart results since wow. since the surgery or since the heart attack and all that. Yeah. Do you know what caused the heart attack? Uh, they said it was genetic. Mm. So they did a genetic test after uh, the first hospital stay. And um, they said it was something that just happened. So I was lucky. And your mom was telling you that your, did your dad pass away from a heart attack? Uh, my grandpa did, but it was unrelated to that. Yeah. Yeah, they said it wouldn't. It didn't show up something that I got it from somebody in my family, and I can't pass it along. So I go to the uh, cardiac rehab in Palpino, mm -hmm. and the lady that runs that, I think, is affiliated here as well. Okay. And uh, she just watches me, basically, on the little heart monitor. I put those on, yeah. and they released me to do everything, but I wanted to go back just to make sure, like, because whenever I was wearing the external defibrillator, I was running and it almost shocked me because I was running around the track and I was racing. I shouldn't have been. <laughs> and uh, I got my heart rate up a little too fast. It was like two, 210 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I stopped it, calmed down. My heart rate went right back into rhythm. It was fine. Um, but I didn't want that to happen while this was, because I don't have any buttons to press on this to reset it. Yeah. So. <clears throat> just to go and have somebody watching me, it just like a peace of mind, kind of, yeah. So you're able to work out, mm -hmm. able to run? I, right now, because I was a part of, I am a part of uh, Veterans in Pain, it's called VIP, and they did uh, uh, PRP injections in my knee, and it, it was already torn, and they told me not to run on it anymore. <laughs> So they told me to slow down, and then they yeah, had the doctors for my heart. They released me now. So wow. yeah, wow. full. All my restrictions are off. I can pretty much do whatever, yes. like lift my arms and stuff, and all that good stuff. You feel perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't feel it at all when I work out or when building the fence or doing anything around the house. Wow, I, it's just there. And to know that you're the you're the first Texan. To have this, mm -hmm. what is that like? Oh, I was like excited. <laughs> you were pumped for it. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, just to be the first one, obviously, yeah. and then um, I don't know, just like those, do the craziest thing, I guess. I don't know. Um, there's actually one of the 
ladies that are in my rehab, she's getting the exact same device. I was like, oh, I got that. <laughs> it was no problem. Yeah. yeah. So why is it important that veterans do get checked out and do, um, you know, see those doctors or get the medicine that they need? Because like, like you said, you blew so much off. Mm -hmm. um, but what is your message to veterans um, and people who you know might have heart issues this month just just to go to the doctor before it gets too late? Definitely get it checked out. If you're feeling anything funny like palpitations or just like it skipping, uh, getting it checked out would help because before I had this, there was probably some of those symptoms that I was seeing and I didn't realize what it was and I didn't notice. I was just like, oh, my heart's skipping a beat or whatever. Mm -hmm. But once it starts taking off, there's no stopping it. So yeah. getting it checked out and then working out, staying on top of uh, basically your cardio health, uh, walking low impact stuff helps out a bunch. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and so that thing is supposed to be good for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's, it may never shock me again. It may shock me in 10 years. It may shock me tomorrow. I don't know. Just whenever it does, it, it's there for me. And it's like a, uh, I don't want to say like a peace of mind, but it does make it easier going to do fun things. <laughs> and and uh, I don't have to worry about it. Whenever I was little, we went to the top of Texas, Guadalupe Mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember there was this old guy and he was like, I just had my third heart surgery or something like that and I've got to make it up this mountain in like three hours or something it takes an eight hour hike he was doing it really fast I was like oh my goodness yeah and then I want to go this spring for my birthday so I can go hike up the top of Texas wow. <laughs> after heart surgery that'd be that pretty fun pretty cool, man. it'll probably take me a lot longer than eight hours though <laughs> face yourself right <laughs> face your face yourself, <laughs> um but overall, you're, you're feeling good, you mm -hmm. look good. Yeah. Um, what are you excited for most with this second chance, if you will? Yeah, just uh, really being there for my family. I've got a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then Indy's going to be bigger, so yeah. yeah. She's going to be our new volleyball player. There you go. Yeah. <laughs>